This is plane one. It's actually kind of reddish colored and colored pencil. This is plane two. It's bluish colored and colored pencil. So the baby is sitting on the surface of the Earth, and these planes are down um, in the subsurface. The two planes intersect along this line, intersection. So we need to determine the trend and plug of that line of intersection by orthographic projection. Well, you would have to consider the continuation, right, in this case of plane one out this way, to measure the pitch of this line in the plane. That part of the plane has been removed in the model. And likewise, you would have to look at the continuation, the continuation of that strike line for plane two coming this way and measure the pitch or rake here, right? But in any case, you can't measure it from this perspective. In, in both of these cases, you would have to rotate the plane upward. I hope I can accomplish that. You would have to rotate the plane upward to horizontal before you can see that angle. In the lab, that's um, labeled point A. Okay. I am going to put a north indication here. And I'm going to draw a fainter north line right there. So that, remember, we do this whenever we do an orthographic projection. And I'll lower this a little bit to show you. That is my north line. Okay. That is my north reference. Everything in terms of compass direction has to be relative to that. Plane one has a strike of zero two zero. Let me lower this. So you can actually see what I'm doing. Zero two zero, it's right there. Okay. And that is plane one on an azimuth of zero two zero degrees. Three hundred. Um, so in this system, that's due west, right? 270, 280, 290, 300, right here. 270. And this now is P2, along an azimuth of 300 degrees. Okay. is we need to add a fold line to each of these strike lines and draw in the true dip. Okay, you might recall that that fold line has to be perpendicular. That's what this drawing is going to be. Let's put a fold line there. And that line is, by definition, perpendicular to the strike line. That is for plane one. And we can go ahead and put a 30-degree dip under that fold line, right? 30 degree dip, and that's this line. And that angle then is the dip, and that is 30 degrees, okay? So what have I got so far? Again, that's my north line, my two strike lines. I've added this construction, let me add so that's a tree, right, to indicate that that is a fold line on the surface of the Earth. Okay, that's like a cross section of plane one. And let's do the same thing for plane two. Again, it has to be perpendicular. I think that will be sufficient. And this is also a 90 degree angle. And I need to put a 40 degree dip 
under it. Forty degrees it would be right about there, right? Forty degrees. And I'll add that dipping surface there. And this angle then is forty degrees, and that's the dip of plane two. Put it over here. I don't think it'll get in the way because this is the strike line in plane one, this is the strike line in plane two, those two strike lines intersect right there at the surface of the earth. So point A is on the line of intersection. So this, this is great, okay? I haven't, so this is kind of developing as I speak. If that is a point on a line, then all I need is another point. And if I can get that other point, then I can just connect the two dots and that is the line of intersection, right? So I'm gonna pick a convenient depth. I'm gonna try to avoid that tree a little bit. And I'm just gonna say, let's let that be our choice of depth. Okay, what that means then is, so if I, and forgive me if I'm boring you, but if I were to walk out on that surface and come to this point and drill a hole, I would have to drill straight down, right? Straight down a depth D to hit the plane again along this dashed line. So basically, what I just said is if I, if I walk out across this surface in this direction, perpendicular to the strike, and I go out this far, I'll have to go straight down the depth D to get to the surface again. Well, if I do that up here, it makes no difference. I would also have to go down a depth D to get to the surface. So this dashed line contains all of those points. And that is the strike line at depth D. So what I need to do now is transfer this depth to my other construction here. And I'm going to suggest that that occurs right about there. So what, what I'm saying is that depth D will match this depth D. I made sure of that in what I just did. So that's what I'm trying to accomplish now. And let me check that. So again, that was that depth D. And you see all I've done, this is the simplest way to do this. I just use a scrap piece of paper here to check that depth. And I want to make sure it matches that depth. And it does, this dashed line. Is that, that contains all of those points where if I'm this far away from the strike line, I go down this depth D, right, to get down to the surface. So that D matches that D I've got. This is a strike line at depth D on plane one, and this is a strike line at depth D on plane two. Or since the strike lines at the surface intersect right here, we now know that the strike lines at depth D intersect right there. Okay. Therefore, my line of intersection is right here. That is the line of intersection. And I am going to extend it so that I can use this large protractor to measure it. That is the line of intersection. 
all I need to do, my choice would be to measure it this way. All right, relative to my north arrow, 90, 100, 110, 120, 130, 140, 150, 152. I see that as 152. That then is the trend of the line of intersection. It's constrained as such by the intersection of strike lines at the surface right here and the intersection of strike lines at depth D right here. You got to realize everything we're doing right now is in map projection from the perspective of the camera. If we do, we need to determine the um, plunge of that line. To do that, we're going to treat this as a fold line. Put another tree here. And we're going to go straight down. Okay, which means we have to draw this perpendicular straight down. Okay, and do I still have that piece of paper handy? That was our depth D. We have to use that very same depth D here. We have to come down. right there. That will be the depth D. Under the map projection of the line of intersection. So this then is the plunge. Of that line. And all that's left to do is to measure it. Let's write this. 10, 20, 25, 24. Let's call it 24 degrees. 24 degrees. There you have it. I hope that made sense. We're not quite done. We're almost done. We've got to measure pitch or rake. So far, what we know is that the... Um, this line, line of intersection, all right, we'll call it right here, P1, P2. It um, would be described as 24 degrees, 152. Move that up, all right? Line of intersection, P1, P2, has a plunge, that's the plunge of 24 degrees, and the trend or bearing of 152 degrees. And we're going to figure out the pitch or rake of plane two in plane one. The way that's worded is very important, right? Let me put it up here. So this construction I'm about to work on is pitch or rake of P2 in P1. We're going to look at the line of intersection, but we're going to look at it as it lies in plane one and we're gonna measure the pitch or the rake of that line within plane one. Because this drawing is already kind of congested, right? I mean, I could do it down here, but I don't think we'd ever be able to see what I'm doing. I'm gonna do it up here. In the, uh, in the uh, lab packet, in the, the, the example that's given, this is point B. All I'm going to do now is transfer point A and point B up here, such that that point is A. Okay? And point B, I can do that this way. That then is point B. So this line, A to B, is the same 
exactly the same as this line, A to B. All right. So you see this line right here, the fold line on the surface, and the dipping surface here. That, in fact, is that right there. Oh, man, this is great. Okay, that's that right there. You got it? So what we're going to do now is we're going to rotate this plane up like that. Okay? We're going to rotate plane one up to horizontal. And if we do that, then we can measure the pitch. Let's put this back into its correct orientation. North is north. And that's, that's that. So point A is right here at the surface is point A. And point B is right down here. So let's go back. All I've done then is I have transferred this line representing the line of intersection from here up to here, okay? To simulate rotating plane one upward, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take a compass or the, or the compass lead. You can see that I've got it right at that point right there. All right, if I move my hand out of the way, right there. And of course, the center of curvature is right here because we're rotating this plane upward, up this way. And you might have noticed in the other model when I did that, in fact, the edge of the plane swung this arc upward as it was rotated, bringing it to a new point right here. Maybe it'd be worthwhile to do this again. I'm sorry this is taking so long, but it's really pretty cool. If I swing that plane up, look what it's doing. Right? It comes right to this point. Okay? That's what we're going to do graphically. And so now, all I need to do, the appearance of doing that, I bring this up. I'll recenter my drawing in a second. So when we rotate that plane upward, we shift point B from here out to here, basically. In this projection, this is point B, and this is B prime. Maybe I'll do that. B and B prime. So just as we move straight out, perpendicular to the strike line, because we're rotating this thing. Think about it. We're rotating this thing about the strike line when we bring this up, right? We're doing this kind of rotation when we swing this upward. Well, in this drawing, what that's going to do is it's going to shift point B straight outward away from away from the strike line here. So it's going to push it from here outward to here. And that is going to be B prime. I don't like where that other B is. So basically point B shifted straight outward. This is B, and that's B prime. As it's seen in plane one, that line of intersection looks like this now, from A to B prime. So the pitch angle is this angle right here. We're going to test these um, measurements with our spherical projection. 54 degrees, all right? Because that's 50, and that's 5, 54. So this pitch angle is 54 degrees. Cool. Very cool. So the pitch of plane 2 in plane 1 equals 
54 degrees. Wow. When I did this um, on the computer here with carefully constrained angles, I in fact found 54 degrees. Three off. So the, the, the trend of the line of intersection, we found to be 152. And the plunge was 24, right? That's right here. Plunge is 24, the trend is 152. When I did this before, I found the same plunge, 24 degrees, but I found a trend of 151. That is perfectly fine. Now the additional thing that's shown here, and then we're gonna, we'll end this one. But this, this construction relates to the rotation of plane two up to horizontal. In that case, the um, point B in that projection shifts out to point, point B double prime. I use the double prime notation here. The other part of that construction is down here, by the way, that rotation upward. But then the pitch becomes 39 degrees. So the pitch of plane one in plane two is 39 degrees. Pitch of plane one in plane two, 39 degrees. Pitch of plane two in plane one is 54 degrees. And I'm just asking you to follow the steps one through 19. So that is the orthographic construction solution to this problem. I know that was uh, a bit long, uh, but that's because it is a bit complicated. All right, we'll do that in spherical projection next and it'll be so much faster.